are continuing study of the the word evil found in the Bible. And we are number 15 series, 15 parts. And I've said before, you've got to get all 15 of these. This is a study you can't jump in the middle and get one. And I've got the whole lesson because you're missing much. Evil is an interesting word because evil can be a sin. Or evil can be the consequences of sin. And throughout the study, this whole study, guess what? We found it to be either or or both. Both. I'm trying to find a page here. So evil. We find in Job chapter 2, verse 10, but he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we not receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Isaiah 45, 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Lamentations 3.38. Out of the mouth of the Most High speaketh not evil and good. Those are three verses that got me into studying the word evil. And it's an exhausting list. And throughout the study, we're on page 13 of 54. We're not going to look at the, the word evil in every place of the Bible. But I think we're going to look at it enough to see what we're dealing with here. Now we come up to another subcategory here, number five. Good versus evil. Now we, already, we just finished evil is good and good is evil. Now we got good versus evil. And we come to the Bible. And... With good versus evil, to the contrary or the opposition of good to evil. Right and wrong spells out black and white. There is no denying what we're going to read, the roots of good and evil. And yet, before we did this, before we did this chapter, this study. We did something called good is evil and evil is good. And there are people out there who call bad things good. And there are people out there who call good things bad. There are people who say the Bible's the Bible's wrong. We've got a we got a bet good and evil today bouncing around. Right now we got coronavirus. We got one group of people saying that face masks are good. We got another group of people to say face masks are bad. We got people being uh, quarantined in their homes. We got people who are not quarantined in their homes. What is right? Well, we're going to look at what the Bible's right. And we may not look at coronavirus per se, but we'll look at what the Bible. And as you turn to Genesis 3, 5. And as you turn to Genesis 3, 5, let me make a statement here. I think it's very evil. Very evil. That Christians today are, spend, are, are spreading the bad news of the media and the politics. Then they are spreading the good news of the Bible. I said, I think it's evil that a Christian spends more time with the terrible news of the media and the politics than the good news of the Bible. Genesis 3, 5. For God does know, this is the devil speaking. For God does know that in the day ye eat, and there's so many notes in my Bible, so forgive me. Thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, 
and ye shall be as gods, small G-O-D-S, knowing good and evil. But well, look what the devil did there. The devil, though he has put people today a previous study, oh, evil is good and good is evil. The devil has classified in Genesis 3, 5 that there is an and, there's a difference. A maneuver by the devil to entice Eve and Adam, who is present, if you study further, thinking that, or making them think, that God has shortchanged them. God has not given the human being race. He's keeping them from knowledge. How dare God keep you, Eve, and Adam, your husband, foretold evil? Knowledge. God's already told them the good. God has already done everything that's good for them. God has not done the evil. Good is to know God. Adam and Eve had that fellowship with God. God come walking in the cool of the day and comes have fellowship with Adam and Eve. To speak to God. The relationship that Adam and Eve had with God, they could talk with God, and God would talk with them. Adam and Eve had no Bible. They didn't have to read. They didn't have the Bible on MP3, which is good. They didn't have the Bible on cassette tape, which is good. They had God live, which is better. God gave them work to tend the garden. God said, put Adam in the garden to dress the garden, and that happened in Genesis chapter 2. Work is not evil. Work is good. He gave, gave them healthiness. There would be no cancers. There's no sorrows now at where we're reading Genesis 3. There's no hospitals. There's no death. There's no ambulance you can hear in the garden. There's no coronavirus. There's no medication. There's no pills. There's no vitamins needed. He gave them the realms of the perfect marriage. Adam did not have to have the vow, uh, vows to say the death to his part. There was no death. There's no danger. They lived in perfect harmony as we will in the millennia. They don't have to worry about the tigers eating them. And the holiness of God. That's the good that God has given them. God gave man good. Uh, forgive me, my What did the devil, now that was good. What did the devil say that God had not showed them? God had not showed them evil. And there's a contrast of what was good and what is evil. God gave everything beneficial and greatness to Adam and Eve. This is what the devil wanted them to know. He wanted them to know death. Adam and Eve didn't know, didn't know what death was. He imagined Adam scratch his head. Uh, okay, if I eat that fruit, I'm going to surely die. Well, what does die mean? Sin. The wages of sin is death. They're now going to know what it would be to do things to go against God and their nature against what God made them. And they're going to know about sinning. God didn't tell them about sin. God did not come up to them and say, here, Adam. You take this plant, you, you, you dry it up, you crumple it up, you put it between this paper, and you stick it in your mouth, and you light it, and you inhale. God didn't tell them that. God didn't tell them how to make alcohol. God didn't tell them anything evil. But the devil says, you got to know about this, and God is with, withholding you from evil. And the evil of Genesis 3, 5 is hurt. 
Can you imagine walking around in the garden in Genesis 2 and up to Genesis 3, where we are? There was no hurt. There was no stubbing your toe. There was no thorns. There's no pain. Adam and Eve didn't know any pain. Had she become pregnant during this time and had a baby, there would be no need for anesthesia. Pain came after the event. They would not know so, uh, so they would not know sorrow until after they ate the fruit and God cursed them. They did not cry. They did not hurt. They did not pain. They would not know toil and suffering. They would not know torture. We're not told the exact details of Abel's death, but I don't think it was hurry up, close your eyes, and go to sleep as he's being killed by Cain. They did not know what want was. Everything has been provided for them. Now they will have a need of want to follow evil. One day Eve is going to die and Adam is going to want another wife. They do not know the word deceive. That would not be not only their vocabulary, that would not be in their knowledge, but only by evil. They would not know and had not known lies until now the devil speaks up and is lying to him. And he's processing right now deceiving them. Adam and Eve would have a relationship up to now. Excuse <coughs> me. Up to now. Their, their relationship as husband and wife and as children of God and God to them, they would be complete, absolute honesty with no lies or deceit. There'd be no hospital. I got a hospital right behind me. There would ever, never be need for a police station. They would have never a need. And I'm talking about before they eat the fruit. They have not eaten the fruit where we read in Genesis 3 5. There would be no need for prison. You want to know about evil? Prisons are evil. Drugs. They would not ever know about drugs where we are right now in Genesis 3 5. They would not need good drugs to help them. They would not need aspirin for a headache and for, you know, blood pressure. They would not need to know uh, ibuprofen. They would not need the need of vitamins. Nor would they have ever discovered the needs of illegal drugs at Genesis 3 5. Another thing that God withheld their evil from them is they had never learned about intoxication. The good that God given Adam and Eve, they did not get intoxicated. I don't think they would ever got intoxicated until the, girt, the curse came upon the ground. And then the evil else that they would not have to ever learn suffer. And yet, we suffer. Suffering is an evil. It is not a good. So when the devil came up and said, God is, God's giving you good, but he hasn't given you the evil and entices Eve to, 
Ooh. Another evil that shows up that is not good is loss. After this point, when they eat the fruit and they have been condemned and cursed by God, they would, Eva, well, where did I put this? Well, I don't know where you put it, Adam. And imagine the thought. When word, and Eve did find out, imagine what the word would be to Eve, your son, Abel. As Die. What's that mean? Eve, you're not going to see Abel anymore. Not to the resurrected day. He's not coming home. He'll not ever be home. It's a loss. A loss also, too, like we already talked about, theft. We've already talked about police in prison. Evil would be, too, you're going to lose something. Whether your own way or somebody taking it from you. And then another evil, you would be from the absence of God. And there's so much more. So the devil has laid out in Genesis 3, 5, that there is a good which God has given him. There is a evil which God has withheld from you. But it wasn't good for them to have evil. <clears throat> so God withheld the evil from you. And the devil says pity that he did. Pity. Leviticus 5.4. Again, we're looking at now, unlike we had last couple of weeks, where people call evil good and good evil. We're looking at now where there's actually a good and there's an evil. We're going to classify for the next few weeks. Not when somebody says, oh, I call it evil and it's good. Or it's good. And we're not, we're actually going to look at what the Bible says. Our means of judgment, our means of standard. So when somebody comes up to you and says, well, I'm good, you're witnessing to them. What standard is good? And when we tell them, and when they say they're good, no, there is none that do is good. No, not one. Well, how dare? No, we're using the Bible. You may do things properly. You may do things well. But when we put you up against the scale of Jesus Christ. So Leviticus chapter 5 verse 4. Or if a soul. Entire person. Swear. Pronouncing with his lips to do evil. Or to do good. So there's the difference. There is a good and there is an evil. Whatsoever it be that a man shall pronounce with an oath, and it be hid from him, when he knoweth of it, then he shall be guilty in one of these. Well, we get two aspects of the study of this one. I've done something good and I don't know what I've done. I'm guilty. And the greatest illustration of that is the sheep nations at the end of the tribulation period. When Jesus said, you took me in and fed me. You visited me in prison. And you healed up my wound. And you were a comfort to me. They're like, Lord, when do we do that to you? When you took care of the Jewish people. We, we were just doing it. We, they didn't do it for salvation. And then they become a guilty for doing good. 
And we also see that the same thing of evil. And when we speak of our mouth of good or evil, whether we know it's right or whether we know it's wrong, we become guilty. When we open up our Bible, we hear a preacher preach, and we find out that what we have done or what we are doing, when we find out it is a sin, we have now the knowledge of evil that the devil gave to Adam and Eve by that fruit that God did not give us, Genesis 3, 5. The knowledge of the tree of good, of good and evil. I would have never known that I have sinned against God by reading the Bible or going hear a preacher's message had we never eaten that fruit. Now that Adam and Eve has eaten that fruit, it is done. Now we have a cause of evil and we have a cause of good. Wrong, doing quite opposite of good. When perfectly talk about a marriage vow. And when you say before the minister, whoever you on it, unto death do us part. And you don't fulfill that marriage vow by death. And you have terminated that marriage by other means. Now you are not guilty that day that you said to death do us part. You've become guilty the moment that you violated that vow. You have done evil. When I devise something in my heart that I'm going to lie for my good, and I call up the boss and I say, boss, I don't feel good today. I don't feel like coming. I don't feel like coming to work. I'm going to take a sick day. Okay, see ya. Uh, okay, now let's go to the ball game. You have lied, you have deceived, and you thought it for good. Because you pop, you use all your personal time or you don't have or won't be given time so to go do what you want to do. So with my mouth, I have done evil. And I may call out from work and I am not sick. But I have put, as a Christian, I have put lies and deceitfulness, which came of evil, is not good. And ask yourself, and confess, confess the times you have called out from work and you were not what you said you were. Ask yourself, good and evil, was it to the honor of God the Father what I have done? Could God reward me just calling out sick? That's one of the things I use when I preach on the street Saturday morning. Have you ever told a lie? Oh, no. You ever called out sick and you weren't sick? Oh, yeah. You lied. That is not lying evil. Is that not like telling your child that there's an Easter bunny? All right. Regardless of the fact, that, is there an actual Easter bunny? No. And you say there is an Easter bunny. And there isn't an Easter bunny. You have out your mouth laid an oath to a child. You have deceived that child and you have lied to that child. Is that good or is that evil? 
I want them to have fun. I want them to enjoy by deceiving them. Like you deceived your boss for going out. And then we will have the nerve to tell our child after them being witness to, oh, we lied to you about Santa Claus. We lied to you about the Tooth Fairy. We lied about the Easter Bunny. And you heard me lie to my boss calling out last last week, sick, and I wasn't. And then we have the nerve to tell our children, don't lie to us. And you get preacher stories that come out of the pulpit. And I've been trained in those preacher stories. And that preacher gets up there and says, well, this happened to me, blah, 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 blah. I'm sitting back like, no, it did it. That's a preacher story. You just filled in the blank. You have lied to the congregation. You have deceived the people. And if Jesus Christ were to come back right now or any time or at the judgment seat of Christ, what you said by an oath that we just read, where will it lie? Wood, hay, or stubble, gold, silver, or precious stone. That's see the good is the gold, the silver, precious stone. The evil is the wood, hay, or stubble. And our actions and what we do and will do and have done is it good, gold, silver, precious stone, or is it evil, wood, hay, or stubble? You got to look at your own conscience right now. Look at your life. That which is not under the blood of Jesus Christ. Where is the conduct of our Christianhood? Our life. Is it good? Or is it evil? Another one more aspect as we turn to Deuteronomy 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 39. Here's another aspect. Am I doing good or am I doing evil? How do I know? Well, this one may be a little hard to tell, but here's the question. I've done it. I'm going to do it or I'm doing it right now. Well, Stolly, how do I tell if it's good or evil? Does it please the devil? Does it make the devil happy? Where do you think that lies? Drop the D off devil, what do you get? You get evil. Now, if it pleases God, it makes God happy. Where do you think that lies? Where do you think that lies? That lies with good. Drop the, drop the O off good and you got God. Drop the D off the devil and you got evil. Are you in an O for good or are you a D for the devil and evil? Deuteronomy 139. Moreover, your little ones, your children, little ones, which ye said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither, and unto them will I give it, the land, and they shall possess it. Now Israel was in the wilderness, griping and complaining. God has brought us out here to kill us and our children. Meanie God. And God meant it for good. And God promised them who never will, ever, cannot, should not, and won't, won't be able to ever lie to anybody. But Israel took it wrong. Now little children, here's the lesson, may know that lying or stealing is wrong. They sneak into the kitchen and they look around and make sure mom or dad or brother or sister ain't looking and they take a cookie that they're not supposed to have. Now the fact is they're looking. They know it's wrong. 
They know beyond a shadow of a doubt what I'm doing is wrong. But do they know yet sin? You see, they're, they're stealing. But do they know that stealing is a sin yet? And this what we lie on good versus evil is, is a child going to heaven. Excuse <coughs> me. Before or after they have the knowledge of their sin, what they're doing. Now, if they're hiding from mom and dad, it is good that they know, hey, I'm doing wrong. But when they have been taught in their mind that not only has God, not only have they sinned against mom and dad, but they have sinned against God. Now, here is the, here is the error in the wrong of the way. Well, if I do naughty or nice, Santa Claus won't bring me any toys for Christmas. Santa Claus is not God. And when they stole in that cookie and lied to you about taking that cookie, they have lied and they had stolen against mom and dad and against Santa Claus. Not against God. So Santa Claus now is a God. Not the God. So when that child comes into growth, the fact is I have sinned to a power that is greater than mom and dad. I'm in trouble. And the parent has replaced God with a Santa Claus or whoever. And it could be the Virgin Mary, whatever religion. <clears throat> but when that child has realized and come to the knowledge, I have sinned against a greater power. Now they become obligated to their sin. Not only to mom and dad, but to a higher power, whether you taught it to be Santa Claus or you've actually taught them about God. And if you taught them about God, you have acknowledged those children that you have sinned against God and you will be held liable. Now sin has been charged to their soul and they have become acquainted with their sin. Unless they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they die. However age they learn that fact that they have sinned against God. Whatever age will determine that child going to heaven or hell. Now that child dies and fearfully and sadly dies at a young age. And they don't know that, that there's a God. They don't know the consequence. I mean, they stole the cookie against mom. Mom told me not to do it. Let's say they get up on the stool and they climb on top of the stool and, and top of the refrigerator and they grab that cookie. I know mom. I, I don't know about God, but I know mom don't want me to have it, but I, I, I got to have the cookie. And they fall off that, that stool and they hit the head, they hit themselves on the floor and they die there on the floor and they have no knowledge of God. It was just against mom or dad. They'll be in glory. Because they have no knowledge of their sin against God. But that child, even the realms, if it's Santa Claus making my list or there is a God, and, and that child dies committing that sin, whether they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ or not will determine where they go. He said, well, what is the age of, of accountability? It's what you as a parent has put into that child. And what is Jesus told us parents? Suffer the little children to come unto me. 
many children who die and die in their sins and have not come to God, the charge goes against the parents. And woe be if you bring a false God into your house. And like I said, that God could be Santa Claus. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He's making a list for goodness sake. Be good so you can. And whether it be to the Virgin Mary or whatever gods are of your religious being or non-religious being. So, again, we, we come back to the Adam and Eve in the garden before they ate the fruit. The devil tempted them. What caused the problem for Adam? God told him, don't you eat that fruit. Now, what's the consequences for our children? You catch them in that lie. You catch them in that thief. And you sit them down. You say, Junior, little girl, let me tell you about God. And you explain to them what they've done is wrong. And not only is it wrong against you and against another being to, to take their property or lie to, but you say, you know, there's a God that you have to be held accountable. And the knowledge of God and the acknowledge accountability to sin, at that moment, you need to get that child to God and get that child to Jesus Christ. At that moment, it is your job as the parent to teach them about sin. It is your job as a parent to teach them about the accountability of sin. And the accountability is not the Santa Claus, it's the Jesus Christ. You say, can a child get saved at four or five years old? If you teach them, and next time you do this, next time you do wrong, and you're hiding from mom and you're hiding from dad or brother or sister or whoever the teacher. If you're hiding from them, you are hiding from God. You need at that moment to bring him to Jesus Christ. Well, say, you know, if I don't teach him about Jesus, then, you know, oh, don't even go there. Don't even go there. So the evil here. Is the knowledge that you have sinned against God. When you know. And it's sorry as I've said that that G could be a small G. And we're bringing up a group of people today. Deuteronomy chapter 30. You know they alibi their sin. They know it's wrong, but it's the policeman's fault. The judge is against our race of people. We have a bad environment. So what you do is you're blaming the authority. And blaming the authority is God's fault or the policeman's fault does not end the fact is the accountability of sin. Now you see in New York Harbor, there's a statue in New York Harbor. And that statue's name is Liberty. We have the liberty to do whatever we want to do. Do you know what's, what's missing in the harbor of New York today? has been missing it should be the husband of the statue of liberty but there isn't there i don't think there's anywhere called this statue and it's not the statue of liberty because that's what we we can do whatever we want to do we are missing the statue of responsibility yeah i can do whatever i want 
But after I've done whatever I want, now I got to owe up to it. You know what Adam did? The Lord said, did you, did you eat of that fruit? Well, it was her fault. That's not responsibility, Adam. Eve, did you eat that fruit? It was a serpent's fault. That's not responsibility. And children today grow up and they don't take the responsibility. It's the police, it's the teacher, it's the judge. It is. No, it was you as the sinner. And you know better. And you knowing better does not excuse you of the higher power that is of God. See, that moment when you realize there is a higher power. Yeah, there's a higher power. It's called God. Romans 13 says, you know, I don't like that Republican. I don't like that Democrat. Romans 13 says, I put that man in office. I put that woman in office. So when you are a Christian and you are teaching your children, oh, that rotten woman on Capitol Hill, that rotten guy on Capitol Hill, oh, the, the, his, the governor is just terrible in the... In the, in the, in the, in the well, you're teaching God's terrible. Because it comes down with a Republican, Democrat, Independent, Green, whatever it is. They are authority. And what is the one true authority? God. Now, there are children out there who don't know anything. And I don't know what age. Cannot tell you what age. And they were to die though they lied and steal. They will go to glory knowing nothing of God. And there will be children who grew up knowing that there was a Santa Claus, there was a God, there was a Mary, whatever it was, or God himself that will die in their sin because they would not respect the authority. And many times the parents in the education system or whatever will teach them that. But we need to come to the realization of the fact that, that evil is when we acknowledge that we have sinned against God. When did Adam and Eve acknowledge they sinned against God? Here comes God one day and they hide. And they made themselves aprons. Who were they hiding from? God. What about the children? When they hide from their parents? I know. We got to bring those children to Jesus Christ as young as we can. And the Lord gives them 5, 10, 20, 30 years. And they rededicate their life or they don't remember and they believe in the Lord. Amen. Glory to God even more. Some people, oh, that's wrong. They got to know. You don't know what they know. A child knows a lot more than what we do. And we're not in their little brain and in their heart. With their heart. With the heart. You know, a child of a year, very young age will take that tender heart and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that will be signed, sealed, delivered in the Book of Lamb's Book of Life. Now, maybe on, may, later on, maybe, yeah, they'll rededicate their life. Or maybe forgetting that they've never received and received Christ. But don't put their death on them. Don't put their death on the line. Deuteronomy 30, 15. See, I have set before thee this day. I set before you this day, right now. Those who, who are listening to this video, both now and play it back later. Good. Life and good. That's good. And death and evil. Let's go back to Genesis. I mean, we'll say here, but go back to what we talked about Genesis 3. Remember Adam and Eve did not know what evil was? They had no idea. The devil was like, oh, God, try and withhold it. They didn't know what death was. Well, life is good. Adam and Eve knew death. Hey, we got all these fruit. We got the animals. And, and this is this great. No mosquitoes. We don't have to run from the tigers. And man, this is great. The devil comes up. Well, let me show you what evil is. 
So it's evil. I don't know what evil is. So it's death. Pain, sorrow, suffering. You're missing out on that. Hey! Instead of have a baby with, without pain and without sorrow and just have babies and it don't hurt or anything like that, come and eat the fruit and boy, I'll tell you, I'll show you what evil is. And we set before Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. And it's plain and simple, two contradictions. Today, when we go out and witness, today we set before us you life and good. Life and good is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's good. And let me set forth you the other. The wages of sin, that's evil, is death, that is evil. And John the Baptist says, whosoever has the Son... That's good. Has everlasting life. That's good. He that has not the Son, that's evil. Shall not see life. Deuteronomy 30, 15. But the wrath of God abiding upon him. That's evil. So as I open this thing up, I said, there's an evil that Christians are doing today. They are promoting and they are talking, and they are advancing the bad, evil news of the media. Did you hear about coronavirus? Did you hear there's, there's these wasps that are coming? Oh, you need to wear a mask, and Christian, you have to stay home. And they're not telling about the good news. The good news. The good news. Not the news of sickness and terror and death. The good news is Jesus Christ suffered and died. Yes, he died. How dare you call that Good Friday? It's not Good Friday. How dare you call that Good Friday? It's Wednesday. Don't even call it Good Wednesday. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scripture and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scripture. That's good news. Yea, a Christian is the desire of heaven. But there's even a gooder news coming up. And I don't know when the gooder news is coming. We may be raptured. I may be of the generation that will never die. Or maybe the next generation. Or the generation that. But this coming, there will be no death for a Christian. When the rapture happens, those that are alive and remain shall be caught together with those that have died. In sleep. Paul says, I will not have you to weep as, as others weep with no hope. But, I mean, listen, when a Christian dies, and they're, they're absent from the body and present with the Lord. That's good. So death, as far as a Christian, that's not evil. It's evil for us because, you know, we, we don't see them no more until we get the glory. And we'll be absent or lonely. You see what Jesus Christ has done? He's taken the evil out of death. And without Jesus Christ, death is still remains evil and wicked and bad. And setting forth right now what we just read. When you go out and witness and prepare them the gospel, you are setting before them life, which is good, Jesus. And you're setting before them death, which is evil. And when somebody said, well, I'm good, you need to set them of their ways. Unless they're saved, they're not good. Unless they're the child of God, it's not good. So plain and simple, Deuteronomy 30, 15, evil is not the same as life and good. Plain and simple. Joshua 23, last place for today. I'm going to do five. We do five a day. Joshua 23. There is a difference between evil and good. And let's see, this book of Van Vice Line, Joshua. Uh, we've got.
We have 32 categories of here, so 33 maybe. Last one for today, number five. Joshua 2350. By the way, do you know what we're using? We're using a Bible, aren't we? I'm not calling to my opinion. I'm not calling upon your opinion. I'm not going to no worldly sinners' books, education, or science, or math. I'm going to what God has said in the scriptures, the 66 book. This is why people don't like to read the Bible. Because when you come across a Deuteronomy 30, verse 15, oh, now I have the knowledge. You know what the Bible gives us? The Bible gives us the knowledge of good and evil. And the more you read the Bible, the more you read the Bible, the more knowledge you get. You know what that knowledge points to most of the time? How evil we are. Do, <clears throat> excuse me, Joshua 23, 15. And therefore it shall come to pass that as all good things are come upon you, prosperity, <laughs> which the Lord your God promised you, so shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things until he has, until he has destroyed you from off the good land which the Lord your God has given you. Joshua has given us the prosperity gospel. And he says, when you live in sin and you decide to go against the word of God and you rebel against God, you will lose all that prosperity and you'll get the evil. See, that's not what being taught in the modern churches today. Do and oh, yo, eat, drink, and be merry. What's the evil? Tomorrow you die. Remember we read death was evil? And if you're a Christian at that point, you die and you have no reward. You have no gold, silver, precious stone. What are you left with? Evil, wood, hay, or stubble. God can, is able to do good and evil. Remember the three verses I read that started this whole study? Let me go back over here and find them again. This is what started the study of evil. These three verses. Job 2.10. He said unto her, Thou speakest of what foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of the Lord? Or at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? Isaiah 45.7. I form light. I create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Lamentations 3.38. Out of the mouth of the Most High, for she is not evil and good. So, if we don't look at the word evil, then the three verses, and then Joshua tells us right now, God sins. Does God sin? No, he doesn't. Well, then how can God not ever sin and do evil? Here's the whole study. you got to get it all. Evil can be sin. Yes, it can. Or evil can be the consequences of sin and not be evil. I mean, not be sin. Let me say that again. Evil can be the consequences of sin and not be sin. Or evil may be maybe sin and the consequences. You see, God gives us consequences for our sin. The sorrow, the death, the pain, the agony after Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the garden. But God didn't sin. Now you may decide you're going to light yourself up a cigarette and you're going to smoke. That's sin. God is not going to smoke with you. But God may, and I know this personally, I've got emphysema from smoking. My wife died of lung cancer 
from smoking. He may give you cancer. He may give you emphysema. What's emphysema? What is lung cancer? It is evil by what you have done by sinning. And when God gives lung cancer, when God gives emphysema, God gives death because of that, or God gives other ailments because of your sin, that's not sin. But you've sinned against God. God cannot sin, so evil spoken of, as Joshua 23, 15, is the consequence. Israel's going to go live in the land, they're going to be eating, drinking, and be merry. And they're going to forget about God. They're going to worship other gods. And they're going to do despicable things against God. And when he brings the Babylonians in the land, destroys the temple, and destroys Jerusalem, and carries them off captive into Babylon, that's not a sin. That's a consequence. Yes, the destruction of Jerusalem and being carried to Babylon is and evil but it's not evil as a sin it's because of sin so what we have here is a reaction to man's sin by god god who doesn't sin i'm going to say again in closing and you got to get off you got to get it off. This is number 15. And you got to listen to all that come up, however we, we do, Lord willing. Evil may be sin. Drinking alcohol is a sin. Evil can be the consequences of sin. You ruined your liver. But that's not a sin. God allowing your health and your wealth and your family to break up because of your sin. That's not sin. That's the consequence. That is, that is also evil. You got to get it. You got to understand it. Because the Bible says God does evil. And there are people out there who will use that to say, well, God is not holy. He's absolutely holy. And this is why we're doing this study. This is why we're now evil is opposite in opposition to good. Now, the previous study, the last two studies, good is evil and evil is good. They get it all messed up. Well, I thank you for listening. Share these out. And Lord willing, next week, back to evil.